Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. Today I want to talk about some things I learned while fishing in Venice, Louisiana. It was really neat going on a different boat with uh, professionals who do this all the time. Gives me a chance to learn, you know, about their setup and just fishing tactics and things I can do to uh, hopefully take back to Florida and better improve, you know, my fishing experience. Uh, little things sometimes make a difference. One of the first things I noticed when we were sabiking up live bait is they put these little red beads in between, basically on the main line right before their snap swivel. Snap swivel hooked to the sabikis, but having those beads are nice because you can reel it all the way up and if it gets to the tip, you know, it's not going to damage that tip. Like if you had the metal snap swivel going through that eye, it could damage it, but having a softer plastic bead kind of protects that. So these guys fish with a variety of people and sometimes they need to make sure their equipment is dummy proof. So, you know, if you're fishing with kids, people who don't fish often, you know, just to protect your gear, you might want to consider adding that little bead on your sabiki rods. When we get out there, they threw a lot of live bait and they had a pretty neat thing. It was like, what do they call it? Like a live bait bat kind of thing. It basically looked like a plastic, like wiffle ball, baseball bat. And they, they cut the top off in an angle. And basically you could put live bait in there and use this to really sling baits out. You can get some much better distance. Um, they're slinging out a bait called a horn belly, which has a spiky horn in its belly. And sometimes if you just, you know, scoop it up in your net and you grab a bunch of these and fling it, you know, you can get that horn, you know, or, you know, if it's like a pinfish or something, these fish have, you know, spikes, you know, fins, different things that could, you know, when you throw them, I've, I've thrown them and got little fins or poked and kind of annoying. So it's nice to have that little bat device. It's really cheap and you can fling baits pretty far. I even seen the captain one time, you know, peel a bunch of line off the, the reel, put our hook bait in there and sling that out and let it drift back. So, you know, it's not just for chumming, you can actually use it for your hook baits too. When we were cutting up the tuna, uh, one thing they told us, I didn't realize is they don't put any fresh water on these baits. You know, we weren't washing them off. Um, we weren't putting fresh water in the bag. We just put them in the bag and uh, we actually later took them back and did the vacuum sealing thing. But they said, even when you go to cook it, you know, don't put fresh water on it. It uh, takes away from the meat and the taste. So if you get some tuna, Try to keep that fresh water off of it. They were using a pretty cool setup. It was very basic, um, nice light setup. It was just a 30 reel, not a 30 wide even, just had braid with mono. And they were fishing kind of like we do with the uh, yellowtail. They were using these rods and just putting a live bait in it and sometimes a chunk of meat. And then they were just free lining them back, you know, just keeping that tension off of them and letting them kind of go naturally back. You know, weren't even using it through the tip, just pulling it straight down making it nice and just kind of, I guess, inconspicuous so you're not jerking it and making the bait look unnatural. One of the big things they said was uh, they fish typically up current of the rig or, or whatever, you know, ship their fishing around, put these baits out, throw a live chum, drift the baits, let them naturally and freely drift back and then just drift down. If they didn't catch any fish, they move up and do it again. Finally, one thing we, we learned was a really big thing and, uh, you know, have that top water lure ready, you know, that spinner rod. If some guys in the back are fishing with live bait or whatever bait they're doing, you know, having someone at the front out of the way, you know, you're not losing nothing by having them up there, have them up there and have them throw a lure, top water lure, and you may catch some really good tuna. My dad caught the biggest tuna of the trip on a top water plug, 77 pounder. And, uh, we caught several others. It's kind of like a bonus fish because, you know, if you're just sitting there watching the captain, you know, you're kind of missing an opportunity. So wherever you go, you can apply this to anywhere. The Keys, Florida, inshore, offshore, just having a pitch rod ready. And, you know, you can have someone up front doing that. Give them something to do, keeps them entertained, and you could score a really big fish. These are some of the things I've learned from the captain, seeing them, how they work the boat. If you guys have been on any charters or just you know, from your experience fishing in Louisiana or anywhere, if you guys got any tips you can add, uh, just leave them in the comments below and hopefully we'll all learn a little bit more about fishing and become better fishermen. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time on Real Hazardous.